Hello everyone, the MetaQuest 3 has just officially came out and I wanted to give a quick breakdown on exactly how to use in this particular headset. Now, I will definitely tell you with this headset, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of great things going on with it too. If you've never used a headset before, it's pretty basic, there's nothing super crazy going on with it. But I'll give you a quick breakdown. If you want, you can pick one of these th things up in the link down below, but you probably already have one if you're watching this video, so it doesn't really matter. You can get it from there, you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, on the outside of the headset, there's a few things going on with it. We will look at the front first. So there's a couple of differences in this particular year. So I'll go and zoom out and adjust a little bit. So on the front of this, this is the front of this specific headset. So when you look at it, it basically is a very normal looking headset. However, coming from the Quest 2 that I've already made a video about like last two years ago or something like that, you can see we have some differences. The cameras and sensors are basically now on the front of this headset, which I think it looks, it looks pretty good. It looks very unique coming from the previous one. And I think that's a pretty cool thing going on with the specific headset. With the Meta logo right here, this plate on the front which still looks very good. Now the thing with this headset, you don't really need another device like a PC or something to set it up. It's its own device, but you do sometimes need a phone to kind of set it up, so keep that in mind. On the left side, you just have this little hole right here which is, you know, doubles as your headphone jack, which is pretty nice. This other sensor down below. At the top, there's nothing except your head strap and everything we'll get into in a second. On the right side, this is where we have our charging port. So a charging port is great because it takes USB-C and you can go and plug this thing and charge it up just like I'm doing right now. So it's, a really, so it's a really cool little thing that we have the capability of doing. You have this LED indicator right here. You have your power button, which allows you to power this thing on and off, which again is a super nice thing. You also have this other sensor right here. On the bottom of this particular headset, so if I go and turn around this way, so if I go and turn around this way, you can kind of see we have our volume buttons on the bottom. So we can go ahead and basically quickly enable or disable or like, you know, put you know, our volume up or down right here. You have this accessory right here, this accessory little tag. You have your adjustment, so you can go ahead and basically bring this thing closer or further away from your eyes and kind of fix that blurriness that you may have. This is that little indicator, so you can go and kind of you know, turn it up or down depending on what you want to do. Nothing really on the right side. Um, you know, On the bottom here, you have your specific things right here. Then you also have your little head strap. So as you can see, you have your eyes right here, so you can go and peek through your eyes with these goggles, which is exactly what you're going to be doing. To adjust the strap though, you can go ahead, one, you can even take the strap off if you want to by just taking this thing off just like so. So you can slide this thing off. So you can slide this thing off and basically take it off. So that's an option you have. You can also adjust the strap once it's on your head by bringing these things closer or further away. I typically keep it this specific way, but you can make it bigger or smaller. As you can see, it's a kind of like a strap. So you can tighten it or make it looser depending on your head size. And that is that with the headset. Super basic, you know, pretty cool stuff. With the controller now, this is a little bit of a different story. It's basically the same exact thing as before. So we basically have our normal head, you know, our normal controller. We have two of these. Now we don't really need both of these controllers if you don't want to. You can always use your hand and your hand gestures, but it's really nice to kind of have a controller in some games kind of require it. Now this particular year, Meta did, Meta did go ahead and remove that wand thing that was over these you know, controllers. I'm really glad they did that because it was very, very annoying, but you know, it didn't really bother me too much to be honest. With this specific controller, our joysticks are now a little bit better too. So they don't feel as cheap, they feel a lot more premium. That's another really cool thing going on with it. Now you have your standard buttons here that you can go and click. You have your menu button here. On the other one, you do have a meta button, so keep that in mind. You have your you know, standard you know, way you can hold it. You do have two joysticks or two, you know, two, little, or two little buttons. You have this button right here and this button on the side. So some games require it depending on what you're going to be doing with it. That's another cool thing that you have the ability of doing. Then you have your, you know, little thing down here, your you know, accessory that if you want to go and wrap it around your hand, your wristband, you can go and keep it here so you don't throw these things around everywhere. On the side, you have a little compartment where you can actually go ahead and take out the battery. Both controllers have it. I think there is an accessory that allows you to charge these things up that Meta sells. So you have that option too. You can go and click this button down and you can basically go ahead and basically slide this thing off just like this. And you can replace this battery just right there, which is honestly very cool. These things are just changeable. So you can go and slide this thing back in just like so click it back into place, and that's another option that you actually have right there, which is honestly very cool. Now, that kind of covers up this headset. Some best practices before moving forward, again, keep your controllers, don't throw them around too much, you know, keep them in good condition, replace the batteries as often as you can. Be careful of like joystick drift, that is a very common issue that a lot of people can experience. I've personally experienced this a lot of different times on a lot of different, you know, controllers and headsets and things like that. So you might just want to be a little bit careful with that, but Beyond both, that is basically how you can go and use the outside of your headset. Now putting this headset on, 
you can go ahead and cast this over to your Oculus app. So every single person out there, what I would recommend doing is getting used to the Oculus application. So the Oculus app, you can download from the App Store. It looks something like this. And what you can do is you can go ahead and see a lot of different things within your application and within your headset. So you can see all sorts of different information, whether your headset's charging or not, the controller levels. You can go and see all sorts of other things. You can also adjust your headset settings straight from the specific application as well, which is really cool. But one thing that I really love about this is casting. I love the ability of casting my headsets right here. So you can click on cast, you can go and click start. I can go and cast my headset straight to my phone, which is super cool. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to go and cast it straight from my display right here, and I should be able to see it from the specific window as well. Now with the controllers, you can grab both controllers in the hand, and you should be able to see, you can see yourself moving your hands within the headset. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this a little bit closer to me, just like so. And I should be able to bring it a little bit closer on top of that, but whatever. So in this case, as you can see, is that if I come a little forward, you can see all this stuff here. Now, these are my quick settings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this, and this menu bar is very, very important. So starting to the left, we basically have our met, you know, profile icon. So we can go ahead and edit our you know, meta profile and so many other things like that right here, which is pretty basic to understand. I think most of you probably know something about this. You can minimize or exit out of the application just by clicking up here and clicking the A or you know, B button. These are our quick settings. So opening this up, you can see we have our settings right here and we can kind of edit a lot of different things here. So once again, we have our X and minus buttons up here just like any other window. You can go ahead and see you have you know, your controller options, how much battery you have left here, your headset, how much battery you have here. You can enable or disable brightness. You can bring it lower or higher depending on what you want to do. In this case, I'll just kind of keep it higher. You can edit your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth toggles here, just like an Android phone, you have like these toggles. You can turn your pass-through on off, which is basically if it shows the real world behind you. And if you hover over these things, you can see it gives you a little indication of what it does. You can change your boundary as well. So your boundary outside, like if you step outside your boundary, it'll go and show it. In this case, it's not showing it. You can go and reset view and all these other quick toggles down here. If you want to get into the actual settings, you can click on settings right up here. And there are lots of things under settings. If I go and hop out of here and go back to my main settings panel, there's a lots of things here. So I'd recommend every single person to go through your settings. If you ever have any issues, you can search through your settings here and you can find you know different things and fixes for a lot of different things that you may be having. Now there's the system option here. You can do physical space, Wi-Fi, personalization, storage, seeing how much storage you have left, apps, notifications, accounts, privacy, so many other things here. So once again, if you're ever having issues or problems and you don't want to Google it or whatever, you can always search through your settings panel here and find all sorts of information from this particular panel. Now going back at the bottom, we have notifications. So we can click on notifications if you want like a little bit more information. Within notifications, there's lots of other information here too. So you can always go through and find all sorts of other stuff that you can kind of just kind of, you know, kind of go through. Under the Explore page, there's lots of other things too. The store is basically where you can download all sorts of other applications. So if you want, you can always go through and just find all sorts of apps that are available. There's lots and lots of apps available right now. So you can go through games, apps, entertainment, so many things. And you can always click on the search bar up here to find new things and find new information to kind of just you know, scroll through. There's lots of free things available too. So you can always just go through, find any free game that you want, and you should be able to just use it and download it from there, which is honestly another very cool thing. Under people, if you have friends and stuff into the Oculus, on the Oculus side, you can always find them there. Under camera, you can take photos and different things like that too, which is very cool. Under settings, again, it just brings you straight into settings. Under file viewer, you can just go into files and find all sorts of other things. And then under, under app library, you'll basically find all the other applications that you have on your current device. So this includes like the MetaQuest and so many other things, the settings, so many other things like that too. So you can just go through here and just find all the other apps and stuff. If you want to uninstall something, you can always kind of click on the three dots right next to it and you'll find see details, leaderboards, lock permissions, and uninstall. If you really want to delete something or uninstall something, you can always just tap on uninstall like this. This little option panel will come up. You can always just go through and click uninstall and you should be able to go through and just uninstall it just like any other application. The big things though is pretty much just keeping your you know headset up to date as often as you can. So what I recommend doing here is just going through, clicking on system. Finding the little panel that says like updates, as you can see, we have software update right here. Clicking on the software update panel and just keeping your you know headset as up to date as possible is one of the more important things you can do. Now you can see there's no updates available right now, as you can kind of see from how I'm waving the wand or whatever. So just one of those other things to keep in mind. But beyond that, those are kind of the main things with your headset that you should kind of get used to. There's a lot of options here and a lot of things that you can always change. So just getting used to this headset and from that standpoint alone is one of the more important things you can do. So overall, the headset is probably one of the better things you can probably purchase. It's such a fun gift if you bought it for whatever reason. There's a lot of cool things going on with it. It will automatically turn off as well. 
the headset will automatically turn off and the remote controls will automatically turn off as well most of the time. But I've read a few comments from before and they kind of mentioned that you should probably get in the habit of kind of like removing the batteries from your controllers. So just going through when you're done with it, removing the controller batteries sometimes can actually help kind of keep the controllers from dying out too soon. So that's one other thing. On top of that, like I mentioned, keeping your headset up to date is a very important thing. And getting used to the controls and everything, it's like the more you use it, the more comfortable you're going to be with it. So just kind of keep that in mind. But beyond that, that's kind of a quick layout on how to use your, you know, MetaQuest 3. If you have any other thoughts or questions, though, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I'll let every single one of you guys, hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.